Hey everyone, welcome to Cousin Jack Cars. We're ready now for part two of our tutorial on how to carve this little DIY Valentine's gnome. So in part one, we got the hat all shaped and we started to know a little bit about where the nose will be, where the top of the shoulders are going to be. So today we'll continue shaping and roughing out this little carving and that will lead us along the way to getting to an end product. So thanks for joining me. Let's get started. So let's continue working on our tutorial for our little Valentine's gnome. You can see this hat slopes back um, and you can see that it's kind of a more severe angle from the front than it is from the back of his hat. And that was intentional. I wanted that hat to have this sort of a backward slope to it. During the first part of our carving here, um, you can see, remember we drew those lines at the very beginning from corner to corner, and so that tells us, yeah, we're, we're further along here on the front. We've left more material on the back. We're gonna continue bringing this material back until we get to that, that line right there, okay? And then we'll continue shaping and forming this particular carving. Oh, I, I did say I was going to drop my knife. Guess what? I switched knives. So <laughs> this is a, a one and a half inch medium detail knife. This is also a Helvy knife. Uh, and like I said earlier, folks, if you haven't seen the video about this wrap that I'm using, uh, there's a link in the description below. Check it out. I think you're going to love it. So let's, uh, let's keep going. I'm going to bring this material off. That is the sound of a sharp tool. And uh, that's the thing about a sharp tool. You can feel the difference. You can hear it as well. Okay, so that didn't take long, did it? Got ourselves a nice angle going there. Right? And yeah, we'll just take some off here. You see that cut, folks? That's just using your thumb like a fulcrum and slicing through the wood like this. It gives you some leverage, it gives you some control of your blade. I like to put my non-dominant hand, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I like to put my non-carving thumb onto the back of the handle. Now you'll see some guys, or some carvers I should say, men and women, who put that thumb on the back of the blade. There are some who put that thumb on the back of the other thumb. Whatever you find comfortable, use that technique. Okay, I like where we're going with that. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a stop cut in to mark the brim of our hat. So on the front here, we use the stop cut. And it's simply going to be putting some pressure on the blade and then rocking it a little bit back and forth, just like that. And then to make the rest of our stop cut, I'm going to take the tip of my knife and put that in. I'm going to angle my blade. See the back of that blade? When you're watching a carving video, it's very subtle. Watch the back of the blade, and that will tell you the angle that the cut is going into the wood. I'm going to bring that tip across here. When I get to the corner, I'm going to stop. I'm going to rock that knife. If you try and bring that across the corner, your blade can slip and you can hurt yourself, don't want to do that. Then I'm going to put that tip of the knife back in again. Same thing, going to have that angle, get to the corner, stop, rock the knife, just like that. We'll go to the other side and continue with our stop cut. Put the tip in, get that angle that I want, and I'm just kind of following the pencil line again 
at the corner. I'm going to rock that blade a little bit. And then we'll just bring that around all the way back to where we started. And that stop cut will help us to save some material so that we have some hat brim material to work on. And one of the things that will happen is that the brim of that hat can be very fragile when you're carving. We're going to have to be careful around there. Next thing we're going to do, now that we've got that stop cut in place, earlier we came up three quarters of an inch from the bottom to draw a line from where the bottom of the heart is going to be. And we're just going to continue that line around. Um, I did make a three quarter inch mark on the back side here earlier. And it's just a reference, right? Again, these, these lines, you don't have to be exact. So what is this going to be? This will be the bottom of the coat. All right. That's what we're doing now. We're just draw, kind of drawing a line so we know roughly where the bottom of the coat will be. And we're going to continue to take off material. I'm going to get rid of these bandsaw marks and really work on shaping and rounding this carving. And yeah, we may wind up carving off portions of our line we just drew. That's okay. It's not a problem. We have plenty of material that we're going to be removing from the back side of this carving. Now, did you see what happened there? See how that blade dug in? You can see how much it went down into the fibers of that wood. The grain of that wood is telling me, turn it around, slice the other direction. So one of the things you'll find on every piece of wood that you carve, there's going to be some directional grain that can give you a problem. And sometimes you'll find that spot on every single piece where the grain kind of traverses across and that can be a real challenge uh, very often what you want to do when you hit that spot is grab a gouge and cut across the grain all right let's keep shaping and rounding If you have a bandsaw, you know, feel free to take that pattern that I showed you, you know, transfer that onto your wood, and then use your bandsaw to cut out whatever big old hunks that you want to. It'll save you some time in the long run, right? When you're working on a project, you don't have to do as much shaping as what I'm doing here. However, I've talked about this before uh, with many beginners they may not have a bandsaw and so I'm interested in showing people how to do this without a bandsaw all right remember now when we're carving up towards that stop cut we have to be kind of careful we don't want to pop the brim of that hat off so we're going to take our time And yeah, sometimes you do pop the brim of the hat off. Guess what? That's uh, it's going to be called a redesign <laughs> if, we, if we ever have that happen. It's not going to be a big issue, but if we are aware and we know about it and we're careful, we can just save ourselves from having to redesign our piece. So again, we're just kind of removing some of the bandsaw marks, rounding this, this uh, shape. That's one of the big challenges that people have, especially when they're first starting out whittling and wood carving. And the challenge that I'm talking about is taking a block of wood that is square and getting an end result 
that is not square, right? Doesn't look all flat and square. And that's something that comes with time and something that you learn. And very often what happens, and the reason for a lot of that, is people get a little impatient. And this, this is something else that happens when you're kind of getting into wood carving get impatient and start trying to put in details really before the shape has been formed. And I've talked about that before, but I'm repeating it because it's so important. It's one of those things that you learn that you say, gosh, I wish I would have known that earlier in my carving journey. I'm just continuing to take off some bandsaw marks, continuing to round the sides. Again, the front is over here. We made that notch for the feet. So right now I'm on the left side along where the left arm is going to be. Moving over to the right side now. And again, uh, yeah, we made that line for the top of the coat can still see parts of it. We know that it's three quarters from the bottom. And we're leaving some material for, for that coat. This particular gnome, you can tell it's kind of winter time. He's got some mittens on and a pretty heavy coat. And the idea for this was really to uh, kind of give folks a, a sort of a DIY Valentine's project that they can work on. I'm just going to reestablish that top of the shoulder, again rocking that knife to make that stop cut. Let's go back to the other side, to the other shoulder, do the same thing. And then we'll carve up very carefully to our stop cut where the brim of the hat is. Now, once we have this brim established a little more, um, we can be a little less careful, but we still have to remember that it can pop off very easily. Okay, so. We're getting there, we're rounding. I'm going to come on to the front of this heart now. With that heart, we of course don't want it to be shaped like a V. We don't want that 90 degree angle. So we're going to round that some. We'll still have plenty of material to work with. We want to make sure that we don't get too crazy with it. We definitely don't want it shaped like a 90 degree angle. So I'm just getting that rounded some. And go up here, hit the top of that. Just like that. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's coming along pretty well. Sunny told me I was out of the frame, folks. Sorry about that. She fixed it. And i tell you something. I would not be able to do any of this if she was not helping me out. Um, that's for sure. Okay. Notch for the top of the shoulder. 
we already went over on the other side and took off some of this material from the top of the shoulder to the brim of the hat. Again, we're being careful with our brim. come over here just continuing to work up towards that brim a little bit and now I'm going to come along the side of that nose I'm just going to make a stop cut on either side the idea is simply making sure that we have plenty of material when we get to it and want to make that nose look more like the nose on our finished carving. Yep. All right. So I want to go back down to Where we had the bottom of the coat which you can see it was right around here right three-quarter inch up from the bottom of that piece of wood now one of the things that these lines will help us with is just a, a frame of reference so when we look at the bottom of the coat you can see there's you know some material we're going to remove to get to where those pants are. And so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just make a stop cut again all the way around. We'll start right here on the side. Here's our front. This is going to follow the pencil line around. Again, putting the tip of that knife. This time I'm kind of straight in, not really angled very much. Getting to the corner, I'm going to rock the knife. Again, we're just trying to be safe there. Uh, put the tip of the knife back in. See how I've got my thumb braced against the side here? That gives me some leverage. Just follow the pencil line, get to the corner. Do a little rock. Come back in there and then back to where we started. Yeah. So we're going to take off some material. I'm on the back side here, back of the coat, down to where the feet will be. In other words, the pants. I'm just removing some material, working my way around. And in this particular carving, we have the pants covering up part of his boots. And we'll get there. All right, I'm not going to go all the way to the front here. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to come back at the stop cut that we have. And just like we did with the brim of the hat, I'm going to be going to be careful. Now later on, when we're putting the finishing touches and detail into this coat, we'll have it kind of looking more like a coat would, um, not a straight line. It'll have some variation to it, right? For now, we're just going to be establishing the shape, getting that shape in there.
power here. We'll bring that up to the stop cut. Get that in there. And then just carefully here on the front. One of the things that you learn, folks, is sort of this uh, ability to control your cuts, control that knife. Again, that comes with time and practice. You know, people think they are going to pick up a carving knife and be a, an immediate success. And, and it's, think about, let's think about the, uh, the steps in learning any new skill, right? If you were learning to play an instrument, if you were learning martial arts, anything you go to learn, you're not going to be an expert right away. It takes time. Uh, I'm still learning. Um, I'm learning all the time. And right now, I would say I'm about average. Um, there are plenty of professional carvers who are doing online Zoom classes. Check them out. I think you might enjoy them. There's plenty of uh, opportunity to learn in addition to tutorials like this one. Okay, we've gone around the bottom there. Let's come up to the top of where that heart is. We'll make a stop cut, rock that knife, just like that. And then we're going to take a little bit of a cut up to the bottom of the nose, just like that. Going around. And I'll turn this around now and go down to that stop cut that we just made. Eventually, this part will be the beard. And we have an opportunity to get that established. So we're starting to see some, some shape. He is taking shape. We've got the hat. We've got this rounded. We know where the bottom of the coat will be, the top of that heart, and of course our nose. We'll continue, and uh, please join me in the next segment. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you next time.